All right. Take your Bibles this morning. We're going to open to Joshua chapter 13. The book of Joshua. Joshua is the man that took over leadership of the children of Israel when Moses, uh, the Lord called him home or whatever he'd done with him, <laughs> his body, but uh, took him out. And so Joshua is now getting ready to die, as everybody does. And I'm going to bring out a point here in this, in this, the narrative here in chapter 13, verse 1. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Listen carefully to what this says. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. Is that you today? Are you stricken in years? I feel like you are, huh? And, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old. See how blunt and straight God is? Thou art old, Joshua. He didn't say, Joshua, you're as only old as you think you are. You're a hundred years young. No, he said, you're an old man, buddy. Get ready to die. And he said, in stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Now, that's what I want to look at this morning. Joshua, getting ready to die. The Lord told him when he started, he said, I want you to go over there and possess that land. I've given it, I promised Abraham's children, I'm going to give it to them, and you go over and take, take it away from them heathen and possess it. Now, it comes time for Joshua to die, and he ain't got it all done, as everybody is. There's very few people, when it comes time to die, can look back and say, well, I got done everything I should have done. Very few. He said, there's very much land yet to be possessed. A lot to be done, Joshua, and you're old and getting ready to die, and you haven't got it done yet. I want to preach this morning on this subject, dying with a bucket list. Dying with a bucket list. That little phrase, bucket list, you hear it all the time now, and I didn't even know where it come from, and I just read yesterday, somebody made a movie. You people that watch movies all the time probably knew that. Uh, a few years ago, and called it bucket list. And your bucket list is all these things that you write down or put down that you won't do before you die. How many has heard that phrase? Raise your hand, please. Well, I just well, you keep up with the Hollywood pretty good. I mean, I mean you hear it. You hear it. Uh, you hear it out there. I will put that in my bucket list. I will put that on my bucket list. And I said, I want to preach on that. I want to preach on dying with a bucket list. And Joshua didn't, he, he, uh, he didn't get it all done. He had to die before all the land was possessed. Now, the first thing I want to do is, what got my attention is I, I understand about making a list and wanting to do all that. I, I do that a lot, uh, especially before youth rally. You can ask my girls. You can ask Kelly. You can ask anybody that's around me. Uh, when, it get, when I have a whole lot to do, I'll, I'll make me a list. And I'll, I'll put on there this week, I've got to, I've got to do this. I've got to get this, these bills paid. I'm supposed to visit the jail. I'm supposed to get uh, 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 the, uh, my grass cut. I'm supposed to get a haircut. I'm supposed to uh, uh, fix the, uh, uh, something with the car, get the oil changed. And I'll write all that stuff down, call so-and-so, visit so-and-so, uh, go see that person. Get that uh, leak on the roof fixed. Get that uh, 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 something tire change. And I'll have all this stuff on the list. And during the week, I check it off. And the reason I make that list is to put pressure on myself uh, to get it done, get it done, get it done. Because you know what some people do? You know what some people do? All they do in their life is eat, sleep, drink, play, and work, and then die. They have no goals, no kind of... Of uh, uh, they're not reaching for anything, not trying to accomplish anything, and they live be 150 because they never worry about nothing. I reckon, uh, but they, they just they just take up space and eat food and die. You don't want to do that. You want to you want to get some things accomplished. What God wants you to do. So I've got my list, and then I've got my other list too, my bucket list. 
And I, this close thing I could find a bucket that looks a little funny for I don't know. This is not my bucket. Uh, uh, I found in there somebody brought candy in it or something uh, for Easter. And this is a bucket. I'm going to use this this morning and illustrate your bucket list. You don't want to die with all these little pieces of paper in here. See now. First thing that got my attention was this. Why do they call it a bucket list? A bucket list. And then it hits you. If you think it hits you. you you're going to do all this stuff before you die. That's, you know what happens when you die? They call it you kick the what? Kick the bucket. Now you understand that, don't you? And so you say, well, I never knew that. Well, uh, you know, uh, you say, I'm going to do this, 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 this before I kick the bucket. And then I thought, why do they call dying kicking the bucket? I've heard that all my life. And does anybody know why? Nobody knows why. You need to get you an education. You need to learn stuff that's important in life. Like why wow, when somebody dies, we say he kicked the bucket. I'll tell you why. They did it like this in the old days. You're going to hang yourself. You stood on the bucket, put the rope around your neck whenever you got ready to die. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Learned something today, didn't you? Uh, what'd you learn today, honey? I learned how to commit suicide and kick the bucket out from under you. Now, that's, uh, that's why people call that kick the bucket. Isn't that weird, all the old sayings that we have and we have no idea? But this bucket list come from some fellow that made a, a movie or something several years ago, and you have all these things in here you want to do. If you're a housewife here this morning, if you're a businessman, if you're a, a daddy, if you're a, if you're a, a teenager, you got all this stuff that you say, I'm going to get this done before I die. And I'm going to help you with that just a little bit. You know what I've done? I looked it up in this age of information about bucket lists, and let me tell you what I found. They had one Google site where they have, this is your bucket list, and it had 1,000 things to put on your bucket. 1,000. I did not read all 1,000 of them, but I read a few. You know what? I looked up another one, and it said, here's my bucket list. And it had 326 things to put on your bucket list. And they were things like this. Listen to this. This is what they tell you to put on your bucket list. Explore a cave while, while you're still alive. Catch a shark at least one time in your life. Go somewhere where there's sharks. Get a hold of one. Turn a flip on a trampoline. Go hang gliding. Go to the top of Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio de Janeiro down in, in Brazil. Stay at the Ice Hotel in Sweden. These are the things that the world thinks are just so important. Uh, swim in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, visit Stonehenge. See all the castles in Europe. I've seen the castles in West Virginia. I don't want to go and see them in Europe. Uh, uh, some, they had one. See Holland in full bloom. One of the greatest things you can ever do in life is see Holland in full bloom. Uh, stick your toes in every one of the Great Lakes. Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Superior. Be, say, I stuck my toes in every one of the Great Lakes. What a wonderful accomplishment. And you know why they tell you stuff like that? Go kite surfing. Go mountain bike riding. Go bungee jumping. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with any of them things. But you see the mentality of our generation is, go have all the fun that you can possibly have. I read a bunch of them and not one of them said anything like, make sure your mom has plenty of food and her roof and take care of your parents before they die. Not one of them said visit a rest home. Not one of them. As a matter of fact, I didn't read a one that said do anything for anybody else but yourself. Isn't that awful? Isn't that awful? I did not read a one where it said even do something for your mate. Special. You, if you do something, take your mate somewhere they've, they've always wanted to go or buy them something or do something that they're not expecting. Not once, not once, not once did it say support a missionary. Not once did it say, be a faithful person, pay your tithe. Nothing like that. 
turn a flip on a trampoline. Stick your toes in Lake Superior. Ain't nothing wrong with sticking your toes in Lake Superior. I've seen the Great Lakes. I've seen, it said, visit the Grand Canyon. Visit Niagara Falls. Do all that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. But let's see what's on. Here's what I want to help you this morning. What's on your bucket list? Are you ready? Uh, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to say a few things about that. Here's what I'd like for you to put in there. You have this little piece of paper, and you, you take it like that right there, and you write it down. Before you die, quit that sin. That sin you've been struggling with. That sin that's haunted you all your life. That sin that you feel like you've never really got victory over. That besetting sin that you think, if it wasn't for that one thing, I could really serve God. I could really do right. I could really do it. Hey, put that on your bucket list, man. Quit. Quit. Let this be the day. Let tomorrow be the day. I mean, brother, let, let's check. I wonder, that's a good thing, isn't it? Quit. Hey, when it comes time to die, I don't want that left on my bucket list. When it comes time for Brother Danny to leave this world, I don't want to say, well, Lord, I had this little drinking problem, you know, and I kept a little bit in the refrigerator, and I, I nipped it quite a bit, Lord, and I, I mean, I know it wasn't right, and I was going to quit. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Now, I, I don't have beer in my refrigerator, and I don't drink. I've never drunk a beer in my life. I have tasted alcohol when I, when I was an idiot and young, but I've never touched it. I've never been drunk, nothing like that. But I'm telling you, there's some people that have a fit with it, and there's people sitting right here in this room today. I ain't dumb. There's people sitting right here in this room today that you still got a grip on you. It's still got a hold on you. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd, get, I'd, I'd say, all right, by the grace of God, I, 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 I'm going to quit that. I'm going to quit it. The same goes for drug. I'm not about smoking pot. I'm not about uh, doing any kind of drug. All you people that get your drugs from the doctor and they're legal and you're abusing them and ain't, you ain't even sick. I'm talking about any any kind of drug abuse, any kind of alcohol use at all, any kind of alcohol use is alcohol abuse. Any kind of use of alcohol. There is no good use for alcohol unless it's for in pain medicine in certain in situations. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I make up your mind. I'm going to quit it. I'm going to quit that. You say, I can't. Yes, you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You make up your mind tomorrow morning, bless the Lord, I'm getting up up, and by the grace of God, no more. I ain't going to do it no more. I ain't going to take one more drag off of that joint. I'm not going to I'm not gonna take one more. I'm pouring it out. I'm getting the victory. Put that on your list, brother, and get her done. What about that cussing? You ain't going to cuss no more. Quit that sin. I'm not going to cheat no more. You've been shacking up? Say, no more. No, God, I'm not going to do it. It's on my list. I quit. Today, I quit. Hey, what's wrong with just quitting today? You know what you don't do with sin? You don't quit sin gradually. You don't say, I'm going to cut back. Cut back ain't quit. Amen. Amen. You always find somebody that's worse than you are to say, well, I ain't bad as they are. Well, that don't count, brother. That don't count. Quit it. Quit it. Amen. Quit it. Hallelujah. Number two. Tell you something else put in here. Witness to that friend or that relative. And I'm going to tell you, all of us have people in our family or people that live near us that we have not really witnessed to. So I'm going to do it, Lord. I'm going to do it. You'll put it off. You see them at birthdays. You see them at Christmas. You see them at Thanksgiving. You see them at funerals. And for years... The Holy Ghost has said, you need to witness to them. You need to let them know what, uh, what, who, that Jesus loves them. You need to tell them. And you put it off and put it off. I know this to be true because there's people in my family like that. I had a cousin. And every time I'd drive by his house, I felt like the Lord was saying, you need to go witness to him. You need to go witness to him. And I did try, but honest to goodness, I didn't try as hard as I should I, I, I thought, he's, he don't want to talk to me. I'm related to him. It's so hard to talk to you, Ken, folks. I actually called another preacher who was a tremendous soul winner, best soul winner in Marion that I knew at that time. And I said, would you please go by and see my cousin and witness to him? And, and I sent people and everything, but I never did really clear my conscience of that. And I'm telling you, one day he died. 
And I, I hope and pray that he's saved. I did witness, but not like I should. I've got other cousins. Listen, you've got a cousin. You've got a brother. You've got somebody. They're going to hell, y'all. They're going to hell. They'll be in hell one day. You're going to get a phone call. You're going to get a, you're going to get a, a, a text. Uh, call home. Call mama. Something's wrong. Emergency. They're going to die one day. You better make up your mind. Hey, everybody in here this morning, let's put that on our list. We're going to witness to that sister. We're going, are you listening? We're going to witness to your brother. You're going to witness to your mother. You know, you say, well, it's hard, and I don't know if they'll cuss me out. Anything. It ain't going to hurt us to get cussed out. We don't suffer a lot of persecution in our generation. We're a big bunch of crybabies, afraid, scared somebody's going to look at us sideways, won't even get out of track because we're afraid we might get rejected. We are the biggest sissified, pantyways bunch of Christians the world's ever seen in history. God God help us to get a little boldness and burden and guts and go to that family loved one and tell them about Jesus Christ. You say, well, I work with this man, Brother Danny, and I'm scared to witness to him because I'm afraid of what he might say. You'll live. You'll live. It ain't going to hurt you if he does get mad at you. It ain't going to kill you. Put it in your list, buddy. Get it done. Get it done. Put that on your list. Listen, when it comes time for them to die, you're not going to say, well, I visited Niagara Falls. You know what that's going to mean? Nothing. I'm helping y'all this morning if you'll listen to me. When it comes time for you to die, this other stuff won't matter. Won't matter. Uh, Chanel back there, she texted me the other day. It's all right if I tell that, right, sis? She texted me the other day and she said, guess what? She's so excited she got to lead a girl to the Lord a traveling saleswoman at her house the other day, 20-something-year-old girl and got saved. Hope she can come selling books for the summer. And she led her to the Lord right there at her house. And she said, Brother Danny, is just sees that the Holy Ghost is in that place. Listen, put that on your list, people. Put that on your list. There's somebody, everybody in here can win. You got a good personality. You can, you can talk people into stuff. You can, you can sell a car. You can sell the, I mean, talk them into the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you ladies, you got the gift of gab, most of you. I mean, most of you men too. I mean, you can talk, talk it up for the Lord. You teenagers, this you teenagers could win thousands of people to the Lord if you just would do it. Kelly got to lead a girl to the Lord yesterday. You know, there's three people saved as a result of God moving in here last Sunday night at that youth service and as people got fired up kids went, got, went home got rid of their wickedness and all kind of stuff and, and uh, uh, Kelly got to lead a young lady she's sitting over here somewhere today she? raise your hand over there honey one of them girls got saved over there yesterday which one was it? That one right there? Raise her hand. That one right there. She led her to the Lord yesterday on bus route. Went in the house crying. I, on, on, on getting saved by the grace of God. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd put that in my bucket list. Huh? I'm going to win a soul. I'm not going to get saved just flowing to heaven by myself. I'm taking somebody with me. Come on now. Number three. Number three. Put this on your list. Men that broken relationship. Mend that broken relationship. Ye who are letting little misunderstandings, hurt feelings, and bitterness cheat you out of the victory of serving God. I, I've never, I, we were blessed. My, my daddy wasn't saved growing up anything, but you know what we didn't do in our home? Fuss and fight. Never did. Now my sisters, I'd get mad at them and, and when, when I thought they'd drunk my Pepsi or something like that. Me and my sisters used to fight. We was watching TV, and we'd be on the couch, and I'd be on one end of the couch, she'd be on the other end of the couch, and she'd put, I'd kick her foot over and say, get back over there. Any of your kids ever do that? And they'd get back over there. And we'd draw a line, you can't put your foot across that line right there. I can, and we, and, you know, just silly. We did little stuff like that, but we never had screaming, hollering, fussing, cussing fights in our house and still don't to this day. I ain't going to have it. Somebody starts at me, I'm going to walk outside. I ain't going to do it. I just, I just don't see no profit in that. But I am shocked. I'm shocked at the people who have relatives, blood relatives that won't speak to each other. I just, I just can't understand that. That's I, My mind can't get a hold of a brother and a brother or a sister and a sister that won't speak. I, that's, uh, it must be awful. 
You say, well, Brother Danny, if you had my, you'd understand. That, that may be true, but I'll tell you one thing. Life is too short to go down with them hurt feelings and hard feelings. I go to a lot of funerals, and you know what about half the crying at funerals is over? About half the crying at funerals are tears of regret. People saying, I should have never said that. I should have went and seen Mama more. I should have went and talked to Daddy more. I should have done this. I should have done that. When they're laying there, it's too late. You Listen, when they're laying there in the casket and you're laying there like that and you know you had not spoke to your brother in 10 years or your mama in 5 years, you're not going to go around and look at your mama's cold face and say, well, at least I went bungee jumping. That's silly. It ain't going to mean nothing then. It ain't going to. People, listen to me. I beg you this morning. Get it on your list. You're going to be shot to how fast you get old. You think you've got plenty of time, buddy, life goes a lot. Listen, I'm getting on up there now, y'all. I can Sometimes I look back and I say, good night. What happened to the 40s? What? Your 40s goes by so fast you don't even remember them. And then you fit, Lord, you want you 50 years. You kicked the bucket. Time to kick it, brothers. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, I mean, you're going downhill. It's downhill from here on, past 40. And I'm telling you, you listen to me, men, that relationship. Amen. Yeah. Go to them. Make it right. And you say, no, they won't let me. If they won't let you, ain't nothing you can do about it. But don't die saying, I'll never speak to them again. I told them I never. And one of them die, or it come time for you to die, and there's very yet much land to be possessed. Lots you didn't get done. Like that, don't be like that guy. They said he was under the bed, and his wife was hollering at him, saying, "Get out of under that bed! Come on out of here! I'm gonna beat you half to death." And he was under there scared to death, and his wife was hollering at him, had a frying pan. He was under there saying, "No, sir, I'm a man. You ain't gonna tell me what to do." <laughs> he ain't kidding nobody but himself. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Amen. Number four. Everybody listen. Number four. Put this on your bucket list, people. Be a dedicated church member. Be a dedicated, faithful church member. You say, oh, I know that was coming. Why do you think, why do you, why is that your reaction? You feeling guilty? That's right. You're feeling, it ain't my fault. You should never get mad at the preacher for preaching about something that you're guilty of. It is not my fault. That's like a woman getting mad and smashing her mirror because it shows the wrinkles on her face. I mean, it ain't the mirror's fault, buddy. I'm telling you, uh, listen, be a dedicated church member. Pay your bill. Now, I'm a firm believer in paying your bills. I believe if a man can, he needs to leave his family out of debt. He needs to get his house paid for, his land paid for, have an insurance policy, something to take care of. Him. A man should make sure that after he's gone, if something happens to him, that his family be taken care of as much as possible. Do you agree with that? Sure, sure, I'm sure we all do. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it don't happen. But if you're, if you're a man that loves your family and you're a responsible man, person and you're honest and want to do right, you're going to pay your bills, you're going to uh, get your cars paid for, you're going to make sure the cars are working order and everything before you leave this world. Make out a will. Make out a will and say, when I'm gone, get it out. Don't, don't leave everything in a, such a big mess, you know, and everything. Leave the church. You know what? I'll give you something to do. Uh, we, our old buses, bless their hearts, our buses, we have work on them every single week. We got two of them out there right now giving trouble. I mean, some, a couple of them, you know, slowing down in their old age. It would, you know, what would be a blessing if somebody would just say, you know what, preacher, you can buy a nice bus for four, four or five thousand dollars. I'm going to write a check for twenty thousand dollars and buy four of them, sell them, get scrap metal out of them, and upgrade our bus ministry. I'll do it. I mean, leave that in your will. Leave it in your will. I've, I've got the church in my will, this church right here. And I'm telling you, you ought to too. We had a man not long ago. I visited him one time in the VA hospital in Asheville. Somebody said, well, you go visit him. He's dying. Nice old man. I went and talked to him, witnessed to him, prayed with him, and, and uh, he died, and the lawyer called us and said he left y'all $25,000 to this church. Well, that's a good little visit. I've been hunting all kinds of old people to go visit since then. That's not true. I, don't, I, I had no idea in the world he'd do that. I never met him but one time. Put it in your wheel. Leave something behind, y'all. Leave your footprint. 
if, if I had to die, I'm going to leave my, there's signs all over Burke County, some bumper stickers all over the place. I'm going to say, Brother Danny left something for God when he left this world. I've turned the flip on a trampoline. I like to cut my leg off doing that one. I've done a back flip one time, and my leg went down through them springs. That's where they invented them little, little padding that goes around there. And them springs I hooked on, and it just ripped my leg right down through there. And uh, I know what it feels like. I sure would like to leave them signs out there on the interstate. Wouldn't that, don't that make more sense? Amen. Be a dedicated church member. Now, I'm going to talk to you a minute out of my heart. When you first got in church, you loved church, you couldn't get enough of church, you couldn't wait, and here's the way it goes. Something happens. People get on fire for God. They come Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and it ain't because they have to. It's because they want to. One man said, I don't have to go. No, you don't. But there's something wrong with that kind of thinking, man. There's something wrong with your thinking. You don't go to church because you have to. I don't go to church because I have to. I'm not going, I don't have to go down there and preach that revival. You think I'm doing that for money? Lord have mercy. I don't have to go down there and preach it. I do it because I want to. I believe that's what God wants me to do, and I'm excited about going. It's not a money-making venture. I mean, you don't have to make money on everything. Cut a slack once in a while. Listen, you know what I've done? Uh, I, uh, I told this man, I said, you got to, you, you got to be a, be a faithful church member. He said, well, Brother Danny, so-and-so got sick. Mamaw got sick. Daddy got sick. And you have to miss church to stay with your sick relative. And you know what happens? When the sick relatives die, guess what you don't do? You get back in there. You have to work. You have to work overtime. Or they put you on a shift where you have to miss a lot of church. And then you get a regular job where you don't. Guess what? You don't get back in church. You get sick when well, the kids get sick or here you go somewhere or something happens. Something always, you go through a divorce or you go through a thing where everything's just shook up and you get out of the habit of, of, of even, uh, you know what goes? Wednesday night. The first time you miss Wednesday night, you think, boy, I'm not going to do that no more. Second time you miss Wednesday night, I said, boy, I don't need that. I need to get back in there. Now you don't even think about coming. See how the devil gets you out? See how the devil gets you out? Be a faithful church member. Look, when it comes time to die, I don't want to say, Lord, I went to the gym every week and, and run. I'd sure like to say, Lord, I went to church every time I could and the doors is open and I was able. Sure would like to have that on my list. Don't get mad at me, y'all. Don't get mad at me, please. Please, don't get mad at me. That shows you got something wrong in your heart. Number five. Visit a sick person. Visit a sick person. Brother Joey, up there in bad shape, get his number, call him. Miss Gail, get her number, call her. Some of some the people that are sick, brother, get their sick, go visit them. Go to the rest home. Amen? When, when, you're, when you're dying, you're not going to feel bad about going to see somebody. Amen? I mean, uh, when, it, when it comes time to die, I'm, I'm not going to say, well, Lord, it's about over. I'm coming home, but there's one thing for sure. I jumped on a trampoline. Is it a sin to jump on a trampoline? No. But that's not on my priority list. I'd like to say, Lord, I did go see those that are sick. I did go visit those that are, that are fatherless and motherless. I did put money in the offering plate and send a missionary. Oh, you know, we just took on a missionary last Wednesday night, y'all. Brand new missionary to Thailand. But done, done a tremendous job. That Josh... Uh, Johnson, tremendous guy, loves the Lord. He's at the youth rally, and we, we're going to support him every month now. Thank God for that. Listen, I'll tell you something else. Let me, let me move on. i got to hurry. Number six, forgive somebody who hurt you. Get that done. Let's get that done. Do it today. Start it today. Forgive somebody who hurt you, cheated on you, took advantage of you, molested you. abused there's people sitting in here this morning that have been mentally physically and sexually abused how do I know that 
I mean, you got hundreds of people in here. The odds are there's probably 25 in here. And if you're not careful, you'll carry that to your grave. I've heard people say, I'll carry it to my grave. I'll never, I don't want to do that. I don't want to face God knowing I hated somebody and didn't forgive somebody for what they'd done to me. You say, Brother Danny, I can't. I can do all things through Christ. Get it done today. Put that in your list. Put that in your list. Before you die, do it. Let it go. Last, I'm going to say this and I'm done. Number seven, take a stand. Take a stand. Take a stand at work. Do your co-workers know you're a Christian? Here's what I do. When a new guy shows up, we play ball. I've had one this week. The doctor. And I could tell by the language. You know, I could tell by the language. Anyway, so we start playing. He's, he's, he's going to play one-on-one, 21 stuff. And uh, I said, I'm a preacher. It's like that. I wanted to get it out of the gate. Tell him what I am. What I, because you don't want to listen to him cuss 15 minutes. And then you say, well, I'm ashamed to tell him I'm a Christian now. Get it out of the gate. Right there, out of the gate. Uh, and then Kelly told me, she said, I admire you the way you witness to people. And I, I'm not a great witness, but I do tell them. I do tell them. When you go get a job, people ought to know you're a Christian. They're not, what, what are you, you should be man enough. You should be man enough to stand up for Jesus Christ that died and bled for you on a cross. We ought to be bold enough, not a smart aleck, not cram our religion down people. Say, I ain't talking about that. I'm just talking about the, I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian and proud of it. I'll wear your shirt, brother. Wear your shirt. You say, brother, when I come to die, I'll show the Lord I've got a Dale Earnhardt shirt. Wow, ain't you some? These people down there in Mooresville said they seen this big three up in the sky when he died. They might have. It didn't mean nothing. You put your bumper sticker on. Put up a sign. Did them sound like it? Put one up in your yard. Me and Ethan got a new one up down there in Nebo. I guess most of you some live up there. You've seen it. You come down that hill. You can't miss it. It says Jesus saves. You know, somebody might get mad. Somebody might cuss about it. So what, brother? So what? They beat the disciples to death. They killed every one of them. You know what? I, some old boys will come down through there and say, Jesus does save. My life's a mess. And get saved and go to, go to heaven when he dies. I want to say glory to God. I'm glad I had, I had that on my list to go put that sign up. And we did it. You can't just say, well, I'm going to live for the Lord. I plan on it this week, preacher. Make you a list and say, by the grace of God, I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to witness. It might cost you a little bit. Uh, but I'm, uh, I told you about the girl in Sunday school a minute ago. Many of you, many of you saw on the news, if you live that way, uh, we get Asheville news where I live. On WLOS, Asheville, WSPA, Spartanburg, Anything, you know, past Burke County that way. We're, we're Actually, Burke County's in western North Carolina, but we get that news. It signs up all over Marion about that young lady who disappeared a couple of weeks ago, Brooke Tolly, 24 years old, beautiful young lady. And they found her body this week down in Rutherford County where somebody killed her and buried her. And one of the relatives called me yesterday. I didn't even know who it was. They call me, anybody, y'all see them signs are all over Neba post office, dollar store, everywhere. And said, uh, Brother Danny, the family wants to know if you can help in our funeral Tuesday. And I said, I can't. I said, I'm taking a gang of kids to camp, and I, there is no way that I can get back here. And they said, you know, she got saved at your church. I said, no, I did not know that. I did not know that. You sat right back there in front of the sound booth with her family. She got saved right here in this church. You know what? I don't know what I did that Saturday night or didn't do. Man called me yesterday. He said, I was wanting to know if I could take you and your pretty little bride out to eat tonight. And I said, nope. I said, I don't do that on Saturday night. I don't go nowhere on Saturday night unless I'm preaching somewhere. I don't see how, I don't see how a preacher can go out loafing and, and ball games and eating on Saturday night. I just don't, I don't understand that. I'm not that good a preacher. I need God. I need God's help. And so as a general rule, I don't go nothing on Saturday night unless I have to preach somewhere. I said, I might do it on Friday sometime, but not Saturday. And I don't know what I'd done that Saturday night. Maybe I fasted. Maybe I prayed. Maybe some of y'all did. 
And that girl got saved. I sure am glad when I stand before God and I'm going to say, Lord, I did a flip on a trampoline that Saturday night. Ain't you proud of me? No comparison. You say, Danny, you prayed. Maybe you fasted. I don't know. Somebody got a hold of God. Brooke got saved. That's what's going to matter then. That's what's going to matter then. Don't just, don't go out of here this morning and say, well, I love Brother Danny, but he just gets on us and he just says, you ought to thank God for it. I'm trying to make you happier when it comes time for you to die. When it comes time for you to die, you're not going to say, well, that, you know, you think the Apostle Paul said, for I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have seen Niagara Falls. I've been to the Grand Canyon. No, he said what? I fought a good fight. That's what Paul said right before he died. Not, I've been in the Arabian Desert and watched the sand dunes and rode camels. No, he said, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. That was what's on his list and he got it done. Got it done. Let's stand. Let's stand. What's on your bucket list? Don't die with your list. Now I'm going to ask Miss Desi to come up here. Uh, they're going to get a song. And I want to, we'll sing just as I am or something here in a minute. And I want every single person here this morning that say, you know what, preacher? I'm going to get me a list and I'm going to put them things down that you said. I'm going to win a soul. I'm going to win somebody, Lord. I'm putting that on my list today. And by the grace of God, I'm going to get it done before I die. I'm going to lead to my Lord. I'm going to make it right with my sister, my brother, my daddy, my mama. I'm going to make things right. I'm going to forgive that person. I'm going to forgive. Let's just get in this altar this morning and, and tell the Lord. I'm going to, you know what I got convicted over my own sir, preaching? What I was talking about a minute ago about witnessing to a relative. I got one right now that I have not really, really witnessed to. And I'm going to put that on my list this morning. Y'all pray for me. I'm going to make myself put that on my list. Come on, let's get in this altar and do business with God. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, that you'd help every one of us to get the job done you've given us to do. Lord, I can't do their job. They can't do mine. But I can do what you've given me to do. And help us to get it on our list today. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we ask it. And for his sake, amen. We got folks coming. You come on. Come on. Let's get in this altar. Come on, mamas, daddies. Just that. Amen. Amen. Let's get in this altar this morning and say, you know what? You know what, preacher? I'm going to get that on my list. I'm going to get it done. Oh, shit. That's right. Come on. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. Amen. Heaven sing, y'all. Everybody sing. Just that. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Blood can quit each spot. Amen. God, I come. We're going to sing one more verse now. What's on your bucket list, y'all? Don't die with all that stuff left. You say, oh my goodness, I really wanted it. I planned all my life to do that. I, all my life I said I was going to read the Bible through, and I never did. All my life I said I was going to win a soul, and I never did. Don't die. Like Joshua had to, with very much land left to be get, get Live a full life. Live a full life. Be a soul winner. Become a tither. Become a missionary. Become a preacher. Be a witness for the glory of God. Amen. One more verse. One more verse. Let's sing it today. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Done cleanse, really, because 
amen. As I believe, oh, and of God, amen. Do you know why people think that the most important thing in the world is to go swim in the Mediterranean Sea? You know why people think like that? They don't believe in eternity. They don't believe in heaven and hell. We're going to be in heaven a long time, folks. This life is short. This life is short. When you get ready to die, it ain't going to mean one thing to you that you saw Grand Canyon. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not, I'm not telling you it's wrong. If you want to go see it, fine. That's not what's going to matter when it comes time to leave this world. Please don't think, I'm, I'm not saying it's sin, but just so much of our life is just took up stuff that won't matter when it comes time to die. I think it's raining real hard, so we're going to have part two. We'll just sit down and I'll preach for another 45 minutes let this shower pass by because I, don't, I wouldn't want none of y'all to go out and get a cold or something like that. That's the Lord saying, they didn't get it, preacher. Give them another dose. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Be careful getting out of here. Uh, be back. Five o'clock choir now. Five o'clock. Everybody in the choir. You ain't, ain't going to do nothing else this evening. Ain't nothing else to do. Swim on back over. And uh, we'll have church tonight. All right. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Derek, dismiss us.